Okay, barbs are oh, barbing, barbs are barbing. I'm struggling to think of a way that I'm gonna get all of my units out of this alive. This warrior can tank another slinger hit, but it can't tank more than that. I'm gonna get this warrior in the city to attack out like that because it earns itself a promotion. You can see just on the bar down below where the promotions are. That was on 11 out of 15. So the five experience I got from that attack was enough to level it up. But I'm gonna move this warrior back at all, which means it's much more defendable. And then I'm gonna say, with this one move across the river that means the warrior can't get to it with its movement the slinger might be able to hit but then i'll have time to hopefully fix things and i'm going to use my builder so i'm going to go and work that rice tile now perfect oh well i gambled and i failed the slinger did one hit my unit never mind i managed to rescue this one at least temporarily just a couple of turns of healing and it'll have enough health to beat the slinger if it makes its way over and this warrior will have full health imminently now it wouldn't have full housing but what i could do is settle on this horse and the main reason really is that i'd be moving away from the barbarians but i could settle on this horse later i could aqueduct over to this tile go for a harbor make sure i've got some industry i mean i don't know if settling over there just for the horses is worth it really i'm mainly just sort of grabbing a little bit of land so that spain can't attack munich very easily if they wanted to but spain is going to produce a religion so this is the main problem i don't need first religion to be honest letting them form a religion first is probably not a bad idea so this is what i'm wrestling with in my head right if i make a religion at the same time as spain spain is very likely to try and bring it over and because they're deity you can see they're already earning five faith per turn they're going to shove a load of missionaries over and kill my religion before it can even get going however if i wait a little bit they can convert me all they want i will form a religion later and sort of counter convert all of the cities with a holy site will flip over it'll all be lovely i can wait i can afford to wait if like three or four people start to make a religion that's not necessarily very good because there are only five religions in the game with this size of map yeah you know what considering these tiles are so good with the bananas and just having a little bit of access to desert that's really handy for culture later because there are certain wonders i can put down near district so yeah i'm gonna send my first settler over in that direction that's not what i thought i would end up doing but it is what we're going to do so this warrior now has half health i'm gonna start to bring it in and this warrior can almost one hit that slinger very nice we can get craftsmanship boosted finished off get a gogi sorted so that we're going for slinger you can see we're now working the food interesting munich wants to grow i'm not going to complain great bath is finished we saw spain doing that that's why and and i guess oh for goodness sake oh that was always going to happen wasn't it before i have a look at the devastation that's caused oh for goodness sake i could see that spain was working the great bath and was going to finish it that's why i didn't bother getting pottery until now i don't think i really vocalized that maybe as well as i should have done but i was thinking that let's see the devastation here okay so a bunch of yields been added we've lost population from munich and i've lost my farm which is really annoying but i got the boost to craftsmanship and these are really good yields this will be a really good feudalism farm triangle later down the line so that's quite handy yeah i tell you what there are so many barbarians but we're now back we're now protected we're gonna get a gogi sorted now we can avoid taking discipline just for a little bit you can see that's just shaved a bunch of time off that slinger let's go and settle that i think the more I think about it grabbing some territory before Spain can get it it's it's a bit ballsy it's it's running towards them but I mean sod it sometimes you gotta be you know I'd rather have the horses I can sell the horses onto Zulu unless Zulu's got their own horses they don't they don't have their own horses so that's fine you can see Zulu actually wants to sell me some amber the thing is amber right now would not help me it might do in a second though because my new city is only going to have minus one immunity so yeah I'm just gonna buy this amber it's worth it that oh here we go Okay, barbarians are absolutely trampled now i'm gonna force work this tile i know it's not improved but i think that just improves munich's growing yeah it takes two turns off the population growth i like that the barbs are being pushed back we're healing i'm now getting a bunch of slingers i will aim to get about four or five of them that should give me the defense that i need just in case spain comes attacking you know they, they might they might come attacking that's the thing coupe hello coupe i have no idea where you've settled but you could be trouble honor to meet you you. yes i will tell you where i am chances are you're ages away from me yeah you're all the way over here okay that's cool i don't mind that two barbarians okay i'm actually going to fortify until healed and use my slinger to get the kill giving me the archery boost lovely here is city number two Cologne. so you can see the city center has two production and two food not two one because the horses gives a production and a food to the tile and it should have been a one one tile so the two two is retained lovely let's make best cheese out of a gogi 
Piggy get a slinger going in my new city? It's working this one three tal, which isn't ideal, but until I earn one of the bananas, that's not a bad one because I can at least pump out some units and let's get another slinger here. That'll be three between the two cities. And I'm thinking, ugh, culture I really, really need. And I'm thinking I could put pyramids down on this tal. Not to finish it, not to finish it, but for the two culture per turn. That would be masonry, that would unlock walls. Not necessarily super helpful otherwise. Irrigation's probably useful. And thinking about it, writing, I'd like to get a little bit of campus science down and Etimananki can be built on any marsh or floodplain, which is pretty easy to put down in my capital. So we'll try and do that. The campus would be very, very handy. Slinger already has paid for himself over. 10 turns until the next era begins. We're currently in a dark age. All I need is a normal age. I'm not looking to go for a golden age. Golden age classical era is really quite difficult. Are they saying that? That appears to be another natural wonder. And there's a culture city state there with six envoys in it already. Oh, five envoys. I need to get six. Blimey. Zulu are very keen on keeping them as friends and I've got to respect that. Oh, these barbarians have been killed. Hunza must have done that whilst we were fighting. Oh, I mean, yeah, fair play, Hunza. You've done well. We'll meet the Galapagos. Excellent. That's one era score. We have the normal age. Normal is fine. There are techniques where you can use a deliberate dark age to give yourself a bit of a boost. It's generally very difficult to do though. <laughs> very difficult to do. Foreign trade, discover a second continent. I'm going to just leave that one for a little bit. State workforce. Here we go. Although I'm actually thinking about it. Do I want to get boats out? So one strategy early game is to get a galley out. Now a galley has 30 combat strength, which means your cities go up by 10 power because currently they're dictated by a 20 power warrior. 30 power galley obviously puts them up by another 10 combat strength, but putting a boat into the sea gives you two era score and then they just, they're really quick at exploring. It is tempting. It is very tempting. Slinger number two is finished. Cologne is just about to finish its as well. I'm just trying to think now, is it worth, oh, a third person's going for a religion. I do want to think now about getting a religion out. You want at least three slingers. Reason for it is because you want to upgrade three archers to get the boost for machinery. So down the line, having three slingers is very helpful. You also ideally want three warriors because you want three line inventory later down the line, but that, that's a long way down the line. Yeah, I'm just going to save it. I've probably got enough slingers for now. There's the barb camp. Oh, and unfortunately there is a barb warrior there. Maybe I'm going to need more. Well, we're going to go and send some units over towards the barb camp now. I'd like to get the era score for killing it. I think they might charge my slinger, but I should be able to run away. Oh, Spain is forward settling me. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, we just got attacked pretty badly. Okay, I just need to focus on moving away now. I'll send my units in a sort of logical and careful way to kind of clog up the pass a little bit. There's my third slinger and, oh, look at this. That's a lot of warriors. Okay, barbs are not going to be our problem. Got to buy a couple more troops. One more warrior, one more warrior. And yeah, actually I've changed my mind. We are going to go sailing just to get the defense of Cologne up a little bit. Or do we go archery for the archers? I'm going to go archery. I think promoted slingers, upgraded slingers are going to be really good. The one thing I'm saving my gold up for first is just to get this uh, settler, 440 gold. I'd like to put this city down because then I can get olives, I can get another source of horse. Really good combo that. Okay, yep, I'm moving my troops around quite substantially and another major flood. Same river, two more fertilized towers but two more population lost. My capital's down to one pop. Oh, that's brutal. That is brutal game. Stop it. <laughs> There's nothing I could do about that. I wouldn't have been able to build a, a great bath even if I wanted to. Yeah, that's pretty harsh. Pretty harsh. Okay, choose a pantheon. There are a few options here. We could get yields on any of the tile improvements around. So we've got a quarry, actually two quarries. We could have plantations. There's a fishing boat right out to sea there. But what I'm going to do is basically teach you about a pantheon, which is very, very loosely competed for by the AI. The AI doesn't really tend to go for it. This one. City patron goddess. Now one of the fun things about builders is that they can remove features like woods, rainforests or stones. Anything that's removed that gives pure production like wood or stone typically gives you enough production to give you about a third of the district cost because the yields scale with the same category of deciding mathematics which discovers and, and determines how much production a district is going to be because it's all based on how much of either the tech or the civic tree you have discovered. Whichever you've discovered more of a 
percentage of. So the more districts cost, the more wood chops give you, for instance. It's why late game woods give you way more production than early game. It's It literally scales. But Germany has an advantage. Germany has the Hansa. This is half the production cost. So it makes chops twice as effective because you've only got a one and a half woods effectively to get a Hansa out. If you settle a new city with two woods nearby and you chop them both down, you instantly get a district. With this Pantheon, 25% bonus production towards districts in cities without a specialty district. This means the Hansa is built even quicker at the beginning of the game. You can just rush all of that stuff through and it is wonderful. Is it the most powerful Pantheon? No, I'm sure there are other better options out there, but it is a very good one. Now I'm thinking in terms of defensive locations, I'm going to keep one warrior using this river as a defensive line. Munich has a warrior in it. I've got a slinger that can hide behind and do some damage around the edge, although we're going to try and get the archer going as soon as we can. And Cologne is just sort of safe here for now. It's going to be really tricky. This is going to be quite the rush. Although this is a bit of a problem. They have actually just run out of denunciation. They just run out of denunciation. And because I've been nice to city states, I'm actually good on their agenda. Oh, I was thinking I might as well get away with that and just offer them a friendship. Almost. All right, we can we can always try that later. I could offer them a deal, actually. Ask for all of their gold just up front. It's a shame I can't trade a luxury with them, actually, because then they'd, they'd be forced to give it back. I mean, I could give them gold per turn for their gold. I mean, if they go to war with me, then I've taken their treasury already. It's a bit cheeky and it costs me dear if they don't declare on me. That's the thing. No, just, I don't want to power Spain up any more than I have to. So I'm going to sell my 14 horses, get 450 gold or 485 gold, I should say. It's late. It's late at night. I can't read numbers and either we'll save the gold up or I'll just quickly buy. I think I might buy a settler and send it out the back of Munich just in case we lose the city. I'll have a, I'll have a backup option. So they like that. They, they've got a green smiley face. Oh, they, they really want to be my friend. The game is telling them, hey, Ursa would be a really good friend here. Are you sure you don't want to be the friend? And then it's thinking about it and going, mm, no, not today. Right. There's the settler. I'm just going to quickly send that out as fast as I can. Right, all of my gold now will be going towards archers. Come on. There's the wall. There's the wall. Yeah, I didn't quite get the slinger back. That's really annoying. Just trying to think, actually. There is unfavorable terrain there. They are stood on a marsh, but Munich is kind of exposed. I don't know whether to put the slinger in temporarily, get a good hit in, and then keep the warrior from moving the troops around. I might... Yeah, the problem is, if I do that, Munich will take a defense hit, but it will heal health every turn, about 20 health every turn so it can take a hit and doing some damage against the warrior is good now this warrior as i say we've got battle cry we're fortified and we're behind a river so there's huge huge defensive buffs for me on that particular front i might be okay we're producing more warriors i'm producing another warrior here we do have army on the way i'm gonna ask coupe do you want to join in with my war so this is something you can do as soon as the ai has unlocked foreign trade they can join ongoing war you don't need to unlock this it's not needed coupe go on Spain has sinned against me. Yeah, and, and there you go. For one gold, they were like, yeah, absolutely, we'll get involved in this war. Zuli hasn't discovered it yet, but I'm pretty sure Zuli would also be pretty keen. Now, in reality, it's not like Coupe is going to do very much here. They're unlikely to have a huge impact in this war, but it might cause Spain to pull some troops away if there's a border or like if, if Coupe has some scouts or some galleys or, or something in another location. Yeah, look, there we go. So Munich did take a hit. It took 40 damage, but then it healed 20. So I think this gambit is actually quite successful. I'm going to fortify this warrior. Again, do you see this as well? We actually took 32 damage, but then healed 20 of it immediately. So we're just going to keep fortifying that tile. This is a really, really good defensive setup. This warrior can only attack us so many times before it's got to get cycled out. And this marsh takes all of the warrior's movement to get in and out of. You're going to have to do better than that. Problem is, I know that they can do better than that. That's, that's what I'm worried about. Okay, yep, another hit against Munich. But to do that, they've effectively had to sacrifice that warrior. It's damage itself beyond repair. Now this warrior can take a couple of tanking attacks. It's still fortified. It's doing really well. This one is, is just doing God's work and there's actually a barbarian behind Spain. Oh, that's unfortunate. Now did you see I went from about five turns to one turn on archery? There is a funny old mechanism with tech where when an era goes past, techs from a previous era to the one the game is currently in. Game is currently in uh, classical, but now we're in ancient. You get a boost towards techs that you haven't researched yet if they're in a previous era. Do you see how I didn't do writing up to one turn? It, the actual threshold of science that I need has actually decreased. It's a way that the game rubber bands to make sure that nobody gets too far ahead, but nobody really realizes that. It's quite fun. Anyway, the goal of the classical era is to hit a golden age. So what you want to do is pick the one thing which is most likely to give you that potential, and you want
one era score to do that and the best one is by far three inquiry one era score each time you trigger a eureka there are so many eurekas and they're all really logical like for instance if i put a mine down on some iron i get the wheel and iron working bonuses and that would be two era score so there's loads of cool stuff i, I would always suggest free inquiry it's really really good if you're just about to get a religion exodus can be good but i would recommend more thief builds for that one now Coupe really likes us because they're actually at war with the same person and we have respected the natural environment so there we go look we can actually make our first friend this is really good friendships are going to win us this game we will out diplomacy spain before they even realize what's happening so this warrior is pretty useful i'm trying to work out whether or not i need to throw more army at this or whether it's worth trying to build a bit of infrastructure in cologne i could build a holy site it would be pretty under threat but again i do kind of want to get a religion now and oh yeah here we go zulu's got a religion spain has a religion and one two three people are now getting this yeah we've got to get some holy sites out this is something i now do have to do so let's put it in the desert plus one it's a useless tile i don't need adjacency i mentioned this before i i very much stand by that we'll get the working as soon as we can and we're still selling horses by far the most valuable asset we have it's generating us currently i mean eight horses go for 57 gold it's currently generating us about 15 gold per turn just that that one source of horse it's it's really good and Coupe is now going to send us a delegation which means we've got another 25 gold in the pot lovely okay now this warrior's taken a bit of a beating that's fine we don't mind that because what we can now do is move this warrior forward and oh loyalty pressure in cologne how oh, lovely as we can just swap them around i'm going to move this warrior behind make sure it goes back no i didn't mean to delete my pin come on don't do that and i'm going to move this slinger back and across the river and then upgrade it to an archer now this unit has two range and oh i appear to have got an envoy with hunza i didn't realize i had that many envoys with them but that is actually first suzerain with a city state so i get two era score for that amazing and actually they don't have many warriors only three so i could levy their army for 120 gold and that would actually give me another two era score so that's very tempting but now you see munich is actually now defended with a warrior in the middle of it that's much more defensible than it was a few seconds ago love it okay i'm gonna try and work on a builder oh no do i want to do that ha huh. now this is the thing i actually want to sell my horses quickly bank the gold because there's a really good holy site there was a plus two in the desert up here yeah we're gonna just pump that in get these two holy sites sorted i want a religion it's gonna be incredibly valuable to me i think this army should be plenty let's just finish off writing and city number three arken it has no housing whatsoever but that's okay that is totally fine i'm going to work on a builder and i'll buy a builder in arken as soon as i can to start to work on these things around it yep look spain are actually retreating their units they've looked at this and gone uh oh we've miscalculated here this is really bad now when it comes to this sort of warfare it's always better again just keep defending with your units more than anything else and make sure you pick units off a dead unit is one that cannot upgrade that is the main thing i'm the defender in this war i don't need to go anywhere they are just faffing around now messing around and here we go we've unlocked etamananki i am not going to finish this wonder i will just i'll just tell you that for three but what it does do is mean that i can pop it down on a tile stop working it immediately and let my city just work itself around and suddenly plus two culture because it's next to one district beautiful we need more of that we need to see more of that so they're currently stood on my holy site which means i can't build it that's really annoying put another turn of builder in briefly spain are in disarray right now they don't know what to do they really do not know what to do i don't mind that that's fine irrigation i'd like to work these bananas and i'd like to work this delicious olive i reckon spain is probably going to give us a peace deal very soon uh, my archer i literally have all the time in the world i'm going to give myself garrison plus 10 combat strength when occupying either an improvement or a defensive district or something that gives defense i like that sell my horses for another 14 gold and now i can afford an archer oh we keep having to just put random turns of production into really random stuff because they keep moving on and off the holy sites that i'm putting down but look i don't want to attack that warrior because it's getting five from the river three from the rainforest no i'd rather just keep fortified this side of the river and let it attack me i think spain was looking for an easy war here what they got was not an easy war now watch this garrison my archer is currently on 25 combat strength but if i move my archer into my city not only now is the 15 rain uh, melee strength enough to boost the capital by five so it's not as weak as it once was i've now got a 35 strength attack bam there's nothing they can do about that they're bringing a heavy chariot in this is actually more powerful this is a 28 strength unit this is probably the most powerful thing they've brought so far but we'll be fine we'll be fine oh my lord i've never seen this before 
every single AI has gone for Exodus of the Evangelist and they're all getting plus four on profits. Uh, all of them. It's going to be turn 60 and all the religions will have gone. Wow. Okay. Well, that's my holy site plans. Absolutely scrapped. <laughs> I can't build my holy sites for another eight turns. And in that time, the third and fourth religion will have gone. That's crazy. Yeah, there's no point. Um, well, let's see. What religion has Spain got? They've got choral music. Shrines and temples provides culture. And Zulu has Feed the World. We'll try and pick up Feed the World. We'll try and get ourselves Zulu's religion. So I think it's worth finishing the holy sites. But what it does mean is that it's not worth finishing them quickly. There's no point rushing these. We'll get those done when they're done. Let's instead get the builders sorted. I can't believe that. That is so quick. Ah, oh, I mean, we did get a little bit of a war declared on us. We got all these sort of things. The heavy chariot is going to try and kill the city by itself. That is ambitious, especially with an archer shooting it and a warrior coming in to give it some backup. We'll make that attack, get the archer to kill there. Look at that. That initial invasion done. In fact, this is something we could do. I could take a city from Spain because they have 150 grievances against me. Now, conquering a city takes about 100, 150 grievances. It's not much. It's not much. Yeah, I'm going to produce another two warriors and then we're going to go and charge and take a city and then demand peace. I'll either keep it or I'll ask for a bunch of gold in the peace deal. I don't know yet. We'll see. Oh, state workforce. That's a really big boost and early empire. Okay, that tribal village made up for the other one. This will give me my first governor. Oh, that's big. That's big. Yep, heavy chariots backed off. It went, oh, that's not a very good idea. Uh, so brought the cavalry, quite literally. If we start to threaten Spain, they'll actually give me a much better deal on the peace deal. Fingers crossed. We'll see. We'll see how much we can get from them, but I'm hoping quite a bit. Killed another one of their warriors. I'm replacing my units a lot quicker than they're replacing theirs. That's something I have noticed. So this, this war currently is very much in our favor. Let's see, would Spain ask for peace right now? They would and they'd give seven hold gold. I reckon we can get more out of it than that. Now, Cardiff is the only city state that hasn't been suzerained by somebody already. I am always tempted to do what they call the Armani tour, which is where you tip there, pick Armani, pop her in a city state, and get two envoys. She will then get suzerainship of Cardiff, you'll get the era score, you'll get the map reveal, and then you move her on. But right now, there's not much that we can do with that. So instead, I'm going to focus on trying to get a little bit of science up, because at the moment, this start has been quite suppressed. Pingala into Munich, I think that's a very good strategy. Because now we've got irrigation, I'm going to, I mean, sailing would be useful, but I'm going to go straight for currency, and we're going to go for apprenticeship and the Hansa as soon as we can. No delay. No delay at all. And we can now change our government around. A Gogi is still very useful, but I don't need God King anymore. I'm going to get urban planning, three extra production, one in each city. Huge for us. Now expect Spain to start giving us peace offers like that and expect them to actually get more defense. They will begin to build more defense and it's probably going to be heavy chariots. Oh, you're going to be across the river. This is a great place to shoot them. They can't charge at me. Crossing the river will actually cost them all of their movement there. So that's, that worked out perfectly. Oh, I realize as well, we can put hanging gardens down in this city city as well. Do I want to put both in my capital? I do, because Pingala is going to give 15% extra culture. Just putting Hanging Gardens down. Now you can see another plus two. Watch Early Empire. Eight turns now goes to five. That's how effective Ludwig is at this. Oh, brilliant. It's beautiful. Okay, we're pushing my units forward and forward and forward. There is a warrior in that city, but I have warriors of my own. I'm going to keep pushing forward. Uh, my scout's just going to nip in and take that tribal village. You never know. Could be something really good. And you'll see the peace deal is actually going to get better and better for us as they see more and more of our units stacking up on their borders. They are very scared. Is that warrior going to charge out at us? No. Sometimes you actually you can trick the AI into sort of charging you on the field of battle. That can be quite good. This archer is just going to stay here. It can shoot the city. It's a nice location for it. This hill as well for this archer. It can do the same thing. And now my warriors are going to come in. What I need to do is put a warrior on either side of the city and it will do something called zone of control. Now if I can get zone of control, which is the tile around every single warrior I have, if I can put that around this city, it will be under siege and it will stop healing, which is huge. 20 diplomatic favor. Oh, that is an economic resource that no one will buy right now, but they will buy later. By the way, we all know this exploit by now. You can buy diplomatic favor before the medieval era for one gold and then sell it after the medieval era for tons and tons and tons. I don't do that. That's not included in this particular guide. But if you want to do that, I'm not going to judge you. Oh, I'm almost at ambush on that scout now. 20 in all combat situations. 
situations. Really good when you get a ranger or a skirmisher is the last warrior now. Okay, cool. All army built. We've got three builders on the way. Interestingly, people argue a lot about the urban planning versus Ilkham card. 30% production towards builders. Well, for instance, in Arkhan, Arkhan has two productions. So 30% of two is 0.6. So currently the one production I'm getting is better. This city would have six production, so it would technically be 1.8. So it would be better to have the card in and Munich. So, so it's kind of now it's swung just about so that the other card is better. I'll make the switch in a second, but it's always worth keeping an eye on that. Peace deal's creeping up. It's creeping up, but it's not enough. Oh, these barbarians are spawning swordsmen. Oh, that's really good. I don't want to fight them, but if they start attacking Spain, that's going to be an oh no, not my problem. Not my problem. Right. Warrior goes around to that. Warrior goes around to that. Warrior goes up that. No siege right now because technically this amber tile is not under zone of control, but it will be very soon. And uh, my archers are just leveling up. There's not any permanent damage they're really going to do here, but that doesn't matter. That's not what we're after. We're just getting the level. And oh, we've already actually gained Catholicism. So choral music, extra culture. That is not a bad one, by the way. Any game that gives me extra culture is not going to be a game that I'm ever going to have a problem with. Maori has gone for Confucianism. Cool, if you say so. That is great. And this warrior has gone. Bam. City is now under siege. So any damage I do to this city now cannot be healed. There's volley on that archer. And we've got this one attack like that. Perfect. Okay. Well, we can in theory take our time now and take as long as we need to kill this city. But I don't want Spain to get out of this one. So we're going to just keep attacking it and see if we can knock it down. The more damage we do, the more they're going to give us in the peace deal. So part of this is to go for currency. I want to boost this. I'm going to get this trader going. The religion, by the way, I was going to go for the religion that gives you extra gold on international routes for every building in a holy site and the holy site itself. It meant that all of my trade routes would have given me eight extra gold. It would have been so useful, but alas, not to be today. Not to be today. That's what I would have done. So Spain may attack with their warrior. Oh yeah, look, the barbarians are attacking the warrior. Oh, this is perfect. Absolutely perfect. Actually, Agogi is useful, but I'm going to put discipline back in here because I might have to fight these swordsmen myself and I don't particularly want to do that. One attack there, one attack there. This warrior is likely to meet the charge of the swordsman. So I'm going to fortify it on that hill right there. Get this one to fortify as well. Whilst this warrior does some damage, you pull back and then you go to there. I don't really want to fight these barbs, but if I have to, again, same tactics. I'm actually going to leave this governor just for one turn. I want to see what the loyalty pressure is going to be on this city. I think it's going to be pretty bad, but if we can keep the city, we will keep the city. Hunza has actually started giving me iron. Oh my goodness. I don't even know what iron is and it's giving it to me. That's brilliant. This is all good for our economy, selling our horses, selling our iron. And we've got luxuries now as well. What will the AI buy this for? Not much. Okay. I'm going to keep them. You're not going to buy them for a lot of money. I'm just going to keep them. Next up, political philosophy. I could in theory get military tradition to get flanking and combat bonuses, but at the moment I don't quite need them. So we'll just go without for now. These barbs have been very handy, just blocking all Spanish reinforcements. And look at this 93 gold. I told you they think they're going to lose. They're offering me a very, very heavy peace deal now. And all the swordsmen, again, they're going to start attacking me on really defensible tiles. Absolutely fine with me. If you want to do that, no problem. Now I'm going to steal the city, steal the builder. And as you can see, loyalty 0.7. That only took 25 grievances. So now if I make peace with them, which they're going to give me a load for because they're really scared. Yep. Okay. I'll take it all. Um, I mean, it's worth just checking. Would you ever give me a city? Sometimes they will give a city if it's right on the border and they don't think it's very good. It's very rare though. No, they're not going to do that. It's, it's always worth checking. But there we go. There's the gold pattern. There's the gold. They're going to cede the city to me. And look at this. They still have grievances that they've inflicted on me. I only inflicted 50 grievances on them and they inflicted 150 on me. So the world is actually still on my side. That's the best thing. We will unfortunately now never have peace with Spain. Probably they're not going to like that. But ultimately it's their fault. Get good scrub. That's what I say. So we are going to get this city. That city is really good. In that case, I was wondering whether to get Pingala, but actually I'm going to pick up Magnus. We've got a lot of resources to chop out. We could make the city really good. This will just stabilize the city. Excellent stuff. Munich. Well, we've built on destroyed land. The city is going to get big now. We're going to, we're going to build. First thing I'm going to do in this new city is try and build a campus, I think. Although there are a lot of resources. Now I'd rather actually just get the builder and buy the, oh no, we've got one. We stole a builder. Even better. Okay. Yeah. Let's uh, actually just get this campus working. All of these desert tiles, totally useless. Let's make sure they 
are used. Zulu is going to pay a load for open borders and give me open borders? Sure. Open borders actually makes them like me more, which is the ironic thing. Now, how much defense are we going to have against these swordsmen? Oh, these swordsmen are going to put up a terrific fight against us. Fine. Okay, we're going to have to pull back to defensible terrain here. This is my garrison archer. It's not as useful that, but I have my two archers now in place. This warrior is healing this one. I mean, they're all fortified. We've got everything in place. If we're going to survive this, we're going to survive this, you know? If we lose this city, it was just gained in war. It's fine, but I'd, I think we can probably keep these barbs at bay. Barbs are normally pretty disorganized. He says very confidently. Okay, yep. Yeah, they're just moving really randomly. Oh, we did lose a warrior though. That was a hardened veteran warrior. That's annoying. Take the hit. That. Take the hit. That. Okay, no, this is good. This is good. You're still retreating. You're not. You are healing. That is a luxury, which is good. Anyone buying these? Oh, Zulu is now buying quite a lot. My capital is now plus five. I am now gaining 20% to all amenities, including growth. It is tempting to keep the luxury for a little bit, but I think the gold is actually better for me. So I'll just sell this one for now, especially because I'm about to get a duplicate of it. So Cologne, I've got a plus two campus that's going down here. Uh, I'm yeah, just building campuses everywhere now. We want to get a science up. I want to rush as quickly as I can to apprenticeship. That is the thought behind that. See if it works. I am, oh, look, I'm not destroying that much, Coupe. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Oh, Spain gonna lose that missionary? Yeah, they did. Oh, that's actually annoying. Like, the religion was actually stopped there for a second. Now, what is the best trade route to me? I do have a plus six trade route because Hunza gives me one gold for every five tiles a trade route travels, and it was from this northern city, wasn't it? Yeah, all the way to Hunza. That would actually be a very useful raid for me, so, all right, if I can survive the barbarians a little bit i'll put the trade up from this city excellent even my campus is getting in on the capital fund hang on my capital's getting in on the campus fund. you know what i mean do i want to sell horses to spain this could be a really bad idea because they could use these resources to attack me but i like to fly close to the sun icarus never got hurt right that's the the moral of the story pretty sure that's the moral of the story oh level two promoted archer already in cinderies i'm hoping the barbs oh look there's a spanish city here barbarians actually do have a player bias. A lot of people complain about it, but it is actually true. They do. It is a coded thing into the game. So if ever you've wondered the barbs are, are they picking on me or not? Chances are they probably are. Now the swordsmen lose health when they attack, but the archers can attack literally whoever they want. So I'm going to start attacking with the warrior in this city, and then I can go archer attack, archer attack, get the kill, clear it up, and it's fine. Huns up. That's where the trade route's going to go. It's going to immediately get pillaged. I'm going to have to hold off a turn. That's really annoying, but never mind. Got bananas working there. We'll get these stone up very soon. I've got another builder that's going to get another source of horse. Yep, this swordsman took a ton of damage there. And we're going to fortify and then cancel and then promote. Yeah, so you can fortify and then promote a unit. I was wondering that earlier. There you go. Definitive proof. You run away. Bravely. Bravely running away. And we'll get the kill on that unit. See, look, we're, we're doing... Oh, nope. Didn't get the kill. Come on now. Let me have it. Let me have a thing. I want, I want at least one success in this military skirmish. Arkin is actually going to start to get some housing now. Horseback riding has just got a boost and there are the olives. It actually makes my capital ecstatic again. AI still not spending much on luxuries. It will eventually, but not right now. Currency, I'm going to move on to something else. You can see for apprenticeship, I'm going to need horseback riding as well, so I'll quickly pick that up. But we can pick a government. Now, long term, you want classical republic. More great people points and an extra housing and an amenity in every city is huge, but it only applies if you've got a district in the city. I do not. I have no districts right now. I'm still working on them. So we're going to go oligarchy. Plus 20% unit experience and plus 4 combat strength to all of my warriors is a really good combination. We'll go discipline. I will put in conscription for a little bit of extra gold per turn. Urban planning is fine. And I'll pop in Ilkum just to finish off the couple of builders that are still being worked in various places. Oh, Apadana, by the way. Another wonder. Am I going to build it? No. Is it going to give me culture? Yes. Why is it in every game? Every game the barbarians deal you a lot more damage than the actual AI does. It's funny that, isn't it? People always say, oh, Ursa, you don't, you don't target
target the barbarians enough, but I feel like they came at me swinging this game. They absolutely did. There is a kill. There is a kill, and then the scout can run off because it's got skirmisher. Continue to heal. You heal as well. And now my trader can go off. Six gold per turn. Big boost. Currency boosted. And now we can build commercial hubs. Very handy. Very handy. But apprenticeship is what I want. One, two, three, four campuses going down. The reason I'm putting campuses down all blase is because I have something called three imperial cities. Each city can build one more district than usual, exceeding the normal limit based on population. So every city can build two districts. Munich, now it's hit full population, can build three. Take advantage of it, I say. And oh, yep, chopping out campuses now. And you see that? Diplomatic favor? It's now worth something. This is just the favor I took from Hunza, really. Bam, take the gold, yes. And you want my horses and iron? Coupe does, excellent. How much gold as a settler? 560, feels like a lot. Oh, and don't feel too bad for Spain, by the way. Spain still has seven cities. I've only got four. Feel bad for me. Attack the archer, attack that. There you go, dead, done. Barbs, not under control, but definitely partially under control. Let's go hunting for them, see if we can take down this encampment. It's worth era score and Arkan. Oh, I can't chop that out. That's annoying. I need masonry. Um, I don't have bronze working either. Oh, I thought I'd be able to chop out a campus there. I got ahead of myself. N no, no. Mapuche has found me. A new person. Yes, we can exchange capitals. Where are you? Over to the left. Okay. Different landmass. Is that a new continent? Yes, it is a new continent. Interesting. Now, later into the game, we have more options. They only like meat minus two. That's, that's doable. First turn, send delegation. That is plus three. Then send open borders even if you've got to pay a little bit for it now that is plus four send them friendship they may like me in a bit give them a sec give them a sec sometimes people just take a little bit of time to warm up or oh, we can do some trade there you go that helps take the time to build the libraries you never want to but then you always regret it as I say, it's all just about getting to apprenticeship as fast as we can doesn't look like there are many bobs left interesting good 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 wheel boosted it's all era score every eureka we get just gives us era score just gives us something to work with huns are has been stolen from me by Lataro. Oh, you just met them. You just met them. Terrible. Okay, actually, what we're going to do is I'm just going to quickly take a turn to go one and then two like that. Now I can change my government. We're going to change to Classical Republic like I mentioned before. Urban planning. Great. Plus two gold from trade routes probably isn't the best thing for me. We'll go for Ilkham because I am starting to produce more builders now. First envoy counts as two and we'll start to produce some settlers as well. What we want to do is spread out a little bit. Make sure that we've got all of the locations we want maybe to about 10 cities as quickly as we can. That is the aim. It's a difficult aim, but it's one we can do. I'm gonna buy this library and finish the holy site. But first, actually, we're gonna get a monument going. Get a little bit more culture. Culture is really, really good. She's speaking of that. I'll buy a monument in Munich as well. Up to 18 culture per turn. Not bad, not bad. We can do better, but it's pretty good. Spain is probably gonna come after me again because we occupy one of their cities, but the world doesn't care about that. We're doing great. We're doing fine. We're doing happy, happy things. Some barb camps are more of a problem than others, and this is up there with an absolute bane of my existence. So thank goodness we have destroyed that. Did you say we got three era score, not two, because it's within six tiles of my city. Lovely. Now, as I mentioned before, this guide isn't really about domination and about aggressive warfare. I'm not planning now to go to war with Spain. The only reason we grabbed this city is because we had the grievances and they declared war on me. Consider it war reparations. But we are just about to get this campus finished. We're just about to get this library finished. Science is going down. We've got monuments popping up now. We've got a little bit of culture. There's a lot of stuff that I am liking. I'm just realizing we could put Oracle down as well, just to get a little bit more culture. Unfortunately, all of the hills that are around districts either are improved or have features like woods, rainforests, marshes, that sort of thing. Well, not marshes, but you know what I mean. So I wouldn't get any culture for doing it just yet, but we'll hang on to that. Keep on that. Just, just remember that in your head. Oracle. I need to put another mine down in my empire to try and get the apprenticeship boost three mines so i'm actually just going to unlock bronze working very quickly to chop down this rainforest in order to then put a mine down under it although that is giving campus another agency maybe i don't want to do that that's a bad one to clear all right let's see let's do the farm there but we do need one more mine oh arkan that could be a really good place to do it although that rainforest is giving this campus adjacency maybe not maybe over here yeah actually this is a good place because this is a magna city okay decided what i'm going to do now it's a bit of a crazy thought process there but i'm looking looking for a hill underneath a wood that I can chop out. And that is a good candidate for me. Confucianism is now being spread to me. Okay, that is world wonders provide for faith. That is the least useful religion. But what are you gonna do? 
<laughs> what are you going to do? Horses are still selling. Not for as much as they used to, but they are still selling, which is good. And Diplo Favor, if I wanted to really start saving Diplo Favor up now, I could in order to get myself some really good voting. But I don't think I need it. Often early game, you can get rid of your Diplo Favor and just get the gold. So selling everything like that gives me 280 gold, which means I can now afford a builder, which I'm going to use to chop out the aforementioned wood in this city and get the boost. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Portland, Clint Hennis, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Skeptical Bear, Cinnamon Beard, Petra Ryan, Radio Torre, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, El Truant, Creston, RB Hedge, Mushkin Mandeltort, Debel Time, Burial, I'm Daft, Gooberman, Dr. Bobby, Polar Waller Bear, Mixamatosis, NTG Golfman, Victor McPupster, Indigenous 68, Technology Poet, Teddy Zursa, Zaf, Barnaby Rex, Sharky Bates, Charlie Bears. Thank you everyone for your support. See you all in the next video. Goodbye.